You went to purchase a gun, and the gun dealer said, Uh-oh, you've been denied. This is Alan with Quarter Horse Arms, and I'll give you my dopey disclaimer, which is I'm not an attorney. I don't know or pretend to know the laws of all the different states, including the one I live in. So if you're not sure, please check your state and local laws and check with an attorney if you feel the need to do so. So obviously I'm talking about NYX checks today. And there are three responses, you know, one of which is a great response, that you get a proceed. So when you purchase the gun or you're transferring it because you had it shipped to a local gun dealer, you filled out a form, a form 4473. That's the ATF's um, documentation. And you had to show a driver's license or a valid state ID. And if you had a concealed carry permit, the gun, deal, gun dealer will write down your um, concealed carry permit number and when it expires and what state issued it to you. And you're out the door. However, if you're buying a handgun and do not have that, you still need to have a pistol purchase permit. And if you're not buying a pistol but are buying a long gun, you'll at the very least still need your driver's license. So the gun dealer is going to take your ID and the Form 4473 and enter your vital information into the computer. Probably takes about five minutes longer if you're me because I suck at typing. And once they, you know, verify the information and you hit go, it'll come back usually within about 30 seconds. Um, red, green, or yellow. Red is, uh, red is the bad one. Yellow is sort of bad. But green is the one that says you're good to go. You get the gun and get to leave. And just as a by the way, now I said this in a different episode on uh, where your paperwork goes. The Form 4473 stays with the gun dealer. If I fill out a NYX check for you, the only question asked beyond like your name and you know address and that crap is, is it a long gun, a handgun, or a um, receiver or something? It does not ask for what weapon was actually purchased. Okay. And this is a by the way, the next check is good for 30 days. So let's say you walk in and say, hell, and I want that cool gun. And I'm like, hey, no problem. Um... And then you have second thoughts. So we stop everything right there. You know, we've done the next check. And you're good to go. And you said, yeah, you know, let me think about it a little. And, you know, then you come back a week or two later and say, hey, I, I decided I really want it. And the paperwork is filled out. I don't need to run another NYX check if it's within 30 days. But that that I, I've never had happen. Usually if somebody's coming to get a gun is they've already purchased it or asked me to set it aside for them and we're done. All right, now the two other possibilities. Let's start with the denial because that's, you know, kind of the harsh one. Um, if it comes back red flagged, um, it means you don't get the gun. The other thing it means beginning in 2022 is the uh, U.S. Attorney General has to notify local law enforcement that you attempted a, to purchase a firearm and were denied. Now, for, you know, 99.9% .9 of you, that's not a problem. Nobody cares because you don't have a problem with it. You have a problem with you didn't get the gun. Um, and so if law enforcement goes, you know, who do, who do we care if Billy Bob didn't get a gun? He's, he's, there's no record here. All right, but why did you get denied? You could have been denied for something as simple as somebody with the same name. Uh, this happened with one of my coworkers. There was somebody, um, they were both born up in the same area of New Jersey and had the same first, middle, and last name. And were the same age. So it made things kind of weird. That, you know, you think, oh, that'll never happen. Um, I, it does. So if there was a name or it was close enough to another name, it might have triggered their system to like flag it and say, hey, wait a minute. 
The other thing that could happen is, um, you know, the NICS system is dependent both on, you know, the, um, it was NCIC, the Instant Crime Database. They're also dependent on what the states have sent them. So if a state database was garbled or, you know, let's say, for example, you went to the hospital for stitches and somewhere in their database they put down you have a serious mental illness. That could be enough to keep you from getting a gun. And in the meantime, you've done nothing wrong. So you're going to go, you know, so, hey, Alan, how do I fix this? Well, that's a really good question. So I'm glad you asked. Uh, first thing you have to do is get the NTN. That's the NICS transaction number. When a gun dealer goes on and runs a background check, you get a transaction number. It's a series of letters and numbers. And you need to get that from the gun dealer to file the appeal. The 4473 has to stay with them. But there's nothing wrong with giving you the number. So once you have that number, you can go online. And uh, just as a, a, a quick aside, the gun dealer is supposed to give you a brochure or a pamphlet that tells you what to do. Um, bottom line is, if you, can, if you didn't get one, you can just Google it online. I mean, it pops right up. And there's even a, you know, a link to click on so you can... Um, download the PDF of the form and the form is going to say, Hey, uh, this is the appeals form and you fill it out and it goes, you know, name, address, age, blah, blah, blah. And you can file it, elect file it electronically. You can file it through sn uh, snail mail. You might still be able to fax it. I don't know. I don't know anyone that uses faxes anymore, but once you uh, have all that info, It'll be sent to the NICS Appeals Service Team. So there's a there's a, presumably a team of people that deal with the denials and delays, but I'll get to that again in a couple minutes. Theoretically, they're supposed to acknowledge receipt of your documents or document. That will come through snail mail. That'll come through the U.S. Post Office. So you're going to have whatever delay it takes. So you're, and and the um, FBI does this stuff in the order that it comes in. So maybe you applied and it's been a busy week for no nos, um, because you know the FBI is trying to keep guns away from people that shouldn't have them. Um, so this is one of those checks to avoid that from happening. So they'll ask you for the information. Um, first they'll acknowledge receipt and then it will, um, come back a little bit later. If they've denied you again, they will tell you why in general terms, don't call them cause they won't tell you over the phone. Um, and then let's say they couldn't resolve it. They will tell you what agency you need to get in touch with to fix the problem. So, you know, let's say the problem was at a local police office and they screwed up on paperwork. I mean, anyone that does anything administrative, um, things get messed up, things get misfiled on a computer, things get misentered. It, I mean, in all likelihood, that's what happened. But then, you know, they tell you, hey, if you want it fixed, you go talk to them. And they'll tell you that. And assuming you take care of everything, they may ask for more information as well. Um, my coworker had to submit fingerprints and a um, copy of a birth certificate. And you're going, Alan, this is a royal pain in the ass. Who the hell wants to do all this stuff? Well... If you want the gun and there's a problem and you know you didn't create the problem, fix it. And it sucks that you have to do it, but you need to do it. And in the case of my coworker, what made it really uh, infuriating 
was the fact that he had already been issued a pistol purchase permit from the sheriff in his county. So they had already background checked him and he passed. So you could chalk it up to bad experience or whatever, but um, other than that issue with him, I've only had two delays. I've never had anyone outright red flagged. So let's go to the two uh, delays. That's when you get the yellow flag. And now you're going to laugh because you can appeal a delay. Which is weird because it'll take them at least a week to get back to you. The normal delay is 72 hours. So if you came in and got a delay and uh, one of the delays I had was the NIC system went down. So they were putting people on a hold, which was not a problem. Well, it was for the guy. He wasn't happy. But um, the, the FBI has three days to make a decision. And within those three days, they can say proceed. We need a longer delay. So we're going to ask you to hold it longer. But if they don't do that and they don't deny you, at the end of three days, if they have not said anything, you get the gun. So it's kind of weird. I mean, I've never seen anyone get more than a three-day delay. Now, having said that, if you're under 21, the delay can go as long as 10 days. And then they can say we need more as well. Um, and part of that for the younger crowd is uh, just, you know, think about the school shootings and, you know, the general problem with giving teenagers guns that um, have a lack of respect for human life. Um, but at any rate, if you choose to appeal the delay, which... I've never seen happen. I mean, I imagine there's people that do it. You'll still need the next transaction number. And again, you know, maybe fingerprints and a um, birth certificate. But they'll tell you what they need at that point. Um, so hopefully that confused the already confusing air. Green, good. Red means absolutely no, you're not getting the gun, but you can appeal the decision. And yellow is typically a 72-hour delay at the end of which, if the FBI has not responded, it's automatically assumed that you have a green light to get the gun. All right. So, as always, if you have any questions or comments or whatever, call or text 919-808-6480. Uh, you can email to info at quarterhorsearms.com. You can go to our website, which is quarterhorsearms.com. You can check us out on Facebook if you'd like. And as always, this is Alan with Quarter Horse Arms in Snowcamp, North Carolina. You guys be safe out there. <laughs>